Today we'll be talking about one of the many highlights the country of Switzerland has to offer. It's no secret that Switzerland is known for its mountainous vistas and pristine lakes. These environments are popular with tourists all year round, but particularly in the summertime when the weather is good. You have an opportunity to sample a lot of outdoor activities in close proximity, including hiking, skiing, and mountain biking, among others. There are a number of famous mountain peaks across Switzerland, one of which is the Pilatus Summit, P-I-L-A-T-U-S. The Pilatus marks the transition into the Swiss Alps from the relatively flat plains in the north of Switzerland. The Pilatus is located near the geographic center of the country and is an easily accessible day trip from Zurich. When you reach the top of Pilatus, you will encounter a vast panorama of the Swiss Alps, along with a number of activities located at the summit of the mountain. Now, I do photography and I capture a variety of things when traveling, such as historical places, landscapes, architecture, things like that. But Pilatus is unique in that it's a photographer's dream. There are so many interesting things you can shoot including wildlife, nature, forests, water, bog, snow, and people, of course. So if you have a dedicated camera, be sure to bring it along with you because you'll definitely want to use it. For American travelers considering a trip to Switzerland, here are some things you should know if you're interested in visiting the Pilatus. Number one, Pilatus is beautiful. There's no other way to describe it. Ascending to the top of the mountain not only allows you to appreciate the Swiss countryside, but it provides an alternative to your normal travel routine while in Europe. There are many historical places to discover, certainly, but finding good geography that's also convenient to those historical areas can be a little more difficult. And number two, Pilatus is impressive. Part of the appeal of the Pilatus is that it's an engineering marvel. How do you transport thousands of people to the top of a sharply steeped mountain around the clock every single day? There is an appreciation for what it takes to engineer and build something like that, given all of the logistical and geographic challenges that have to be negotiated beforehand. Now, before I go into detail about my experiences with the Pilates, I should stress that these observations may not apply to you personally. Your experiences may or may not differ from mine, which is why it's always a good idea to exercise independent judgment and consider your own preferences when you travel. Having said that, here are five things I like most about my experience with the Pilatus. Number one, it's centrally located. The Pilatus is easy to access from Zurich, and you can make it to the summit from the central train station in about two hours if you're taking the train into Lucerne. Number two, the views. You have excellent views, especially on a clear day during the summer. Not just of the mountain itself, but of the surrounding geography, meaning the lakes, villages, and so forth. Number three, the engineering. On one side of the mountain, you have the steepest cogwheel railway in the world. And you'll spend a, a lot of time appreciating the effort it took to design everything once you're on that mountain. Number four, the ability to combine various modes of transportation. You can take a tram, you can take a commuter train, a city bus, a gondola, an aerial tram, a cogwheel train, a ferry. Or you could bike or walk if you're so inclined. And finally, the people. Getting to the base of the mountain isn't super intuitive to navigate when doing it for the first time, but locals are helpful. And the same is true of the staff on site. Not only that, there are maps and signs around to guide you in the right direction should you need them. And for visitors who have questions, again, locals can be very helpful in orienting you in the right direction. First, let's talk about the location. It really often does come down to location, doesn't it? If you're time crunched, you know, you may not want to spend several days traveling to a remote location far away from a major city or airport. The Pilatus, fortunately, is located near the geographical center of Switzerland, which means it's located near the center of not only the country, but much of Europe for that matter. So it's convenient to a lot of different places. Both Zurich and Lucerne are in close proximity to the mountain. This makes it very easy to combine outdoor recreation into your Switzerland trip. And in addition to the alpine scenery at the top of the mountain, you have a little bit of shopping, dining, and lodging options. Not a ton, but they do exist. So everything you need is right there. And finally, transportation is a breeze getting to and from the base of the mountain to the summit, which I'll touch on shortly. 
Next, let's talk about the views. You have a variety of views from different vantage points as you send the Pilatus. There are multiple hiking paths at the summit which take you around the mountain in different directions. And on a clear day, you can see the multiple cantons of Switzerland, as well as the adjacent forests, lakes, and mountain peaks. There's also plenty of clean air at the top, of course, so it's just a beautiful place to be. Now, the elevation of Pilatus is at roughly 7,000 feet. So this allows you to look down at the countryside without being super high up as if you were on the Matterhorn, for example, which is another famous mountain peak in Switzerland with a much higher elevation. There are a number of picturesque villages in the valleys at the base of the mountain. And if you're viewing towards the north, you can practically see all the way into Germany. Another aspect about the Pilatus to like is the engineering. It takes a lot of manpower to configure gondolas and train cars to negotiate the topography of a mountain. And from this perspective, the architecture of the infrastructure can also be impressive to witness. To keep a cogwheel train at a consistent incline while going from the base of the mountain to the summit, winding around the mountain is nothing short of impressive. And in fact, I found myself spending about as much time admiring the infrastructure as, as I did taking in the views. In terms of physical architecture, some of the buildings themselves are literally embedded into the side of the mountain itself, which is pretty cool because much of the equipment used to power the vehicles that take you up and down the mountain are heavily automated, such as the gondola lifts you'll ride if you're approaching from Kreens. Speaking of transportation, this is another aspect I liked about my Pilatus experience. You don't need private transportation to reach the base of the mountain. And in fact, you have several options for getting to the base of the mountain in the first place. Like much of the rest of Europe, Switzerland has excellent transport connections. The trip from Zurich took me about two hours, which involved taking a tram from my accommodation to the central station in Zurich. From there, I took a commuter train down to the city of Lucerne. Then at the Lucerne station, I switched to a city bus that, bought, that brought me into the vicinity of Kreens. Then, once you reach the town of Kreens, there's a gondola station which you'll use to reach the summit. Now, the bus will bring you pretty close to the gondola station in the town of Kreens, but you will have to walk the rest of the way. Upon exiting the bus in Kreens, it's about a 15 minute walk to the gondola station, give or take. And this is the point at which you'll need reservations because simply getting to the station in Lucerne or the bus stop in Kreens doesn't require reservations, but you will need to scan a barcode to pass through the turnstiles once you reach the gondola reception. Now, once you've reached the gondola station, you'll enter a private automated vehicle, which will take you partway up the mountain, but not all the way. And from here, you can hear cowbells and witness livestock grazing on the ground below you. At the end of the gondola ride, you'll disembark and transfer into the aerial tram to finish the journey to the summit, which is nicknamed Dragon Ride. As opposed to the gondola, you'll share the dragon ride with other guests and you'll have the opportunity to observe the countryside beneath you from the panoramic windows a little bit better. And then finally, you'll reach the summit where you could spend hours exploring and taking pictures before coming back down, in my case, on the Cogwheel Railway. So you don't have to take the gondola and the tram up the mountain. You know, you can take the Cogwheel first and then come down on the gondola. But in my case, I took the gondola and the tram first and then came down on the cogwheel. Now, the cogwheel railway is interesting because it's the steepest railroad in the entire world with an incline of about 48%. And this cogwheel journey coming back down, which is also shared with other passengers, gives you an opportunity to see nature up close. So you'll really be able to see the mountain in detail. And finally, once you reach the base of the mountain, there's a village, Alpnakstad, which is located at the terminus of the Cogwheel train station, or route rather, whereupon you can take the commuter train back to Lucerne or alternatively the ferry through Lake Lucerne, which is a pleasant and calm boat ride. And finally, I wanna quickly touch on another pleasant aspect of the experience, which is the people. The Swiss in general are hospitable to foreign visitors and the locals in Lucerne in particular are helpful and will literally show you the way to the mountain if you get lost. So you don't have to worry about um, 
not being able to orient yourself because people will generally go out of their way to help you and get you where you need to be. So those are the five things I like most about the Pilatus. Now here are some other aspects of my experience that you may want to consider before planning a trip of your own. Number one, it can be treacherous at the top of the mountain. Conditions are always changing quickly and clouds or precipitation can occur without warning at any time of the year. So it's important that you wear good sturdy shoes if you're in a condition to make the hike from the terrace to the peak. I should point out that there are still things to do for people of all ages if you're not in a condition to hike. Also, it's quite warm when I went in the middle of summer, so you should monitor the weather conditions and dress appropriately. Number two, it's expensive. This is kind of a stereotype of Switzerland in general, but getting to the top of Pilatus is not cheap at all. You should plan on spending at least 200 United States dollars per person for the various gondola, tram, commuter train, and ferry rides. You can also hike from the base of the mountain up Lake Lucerne for free, but almost all visitors will be taking some kind of transportation to get to the top of the mountain. There are multiple options, as I mentioned, to get to the top depending on the direction in which you arrive. However, and this is important, you do need reservations for this transportation in advance. And this brings me to my next point, the lines. The lines are long, even if you have a reservation, and they're only that much longer if you don't. There is no tolerance for delays or missed reservations, so it's very important that you allow yourself plenty of time to get up to the top of the mountain, and also down the mountain as well if you plan on taking ongoing transportation. You may potentially be waiting for hours if you don't have a reservation, and it can be quite the free-for-all as foreign travelers do not always respect queuing, although there are signs and staff members present to enforce things. But all in all, make sure you have seat reservations ahead of time. This is important. And you should also ensure that you have enough time between your arrival at the summit and departure from the summit to see everything, preferably at least 90 minutes. The cogwheel and gondolas also stop running relatively early in the evening, so be on time for your reservation. And finally, number four, you may miss some aspects of your trip. It's a good idea to leave enough time coming down the mountain to make a reservation for the ferry if you have one, for instance. They will not wait for passengers who are late, which is very easy to do, given the numerous modes of transportation involved. So it's very important that you show up on time. Overall, I definitely enjoyed my experience at the top of Pilatus and can only recommend it to prospective visitors. Now keep in mind, when you visit Pilatus, you're also adjacent to a number of other recreational areas. So these aren't the only act outdoor activities in the vicinity by a long shot. You may want to do some research online ahead of time if you're considering booking reservations up and down the mountain. Take note of what other travelers are mentioning in their reviews and see if there are any common themes that come up and use those to plan your trip accordingly. And this will prepare you to have the best possible experience with minimal surprises. And finally, I just want to point out that it's always good to hear from you. You know, I want to hear about your experiences. Have you been to the top of Pilatus? How was it? Did you enjoy it? Do they meet your expectations? Do you like hiking? Do you like the outdoors in general? This type of information is valuable and sharing your experiences and knowledge helps other travelers who may be considering visiting and it makes the travel community that much stronger and closer knit. Safe travels and thanks for watching.